Ask everyone come and please be seated. Thank you. I always choose the softer. here today, give our last respects to a fellow who was always there for us, and now we're all here for him. Andy was a good friend, he was like part of my family, he was, he was in my house uh, every other week, when we needed him for the minion and shul, he would be there, he wouldn't question. And so I want to, we'll start with a few traditional prayers and then We'll say a few words. We certainly we lost him way too soon. And so we extend condolences to his beloved daughter, Sean, and to Mark, and to their kids, and the whole family, and to all of us, and all his friends, those who are here now, and those who couldn't make it as well. I'll read in Hebrew a little bit, and then in English as well. we read, happy is the man who is not followed in the counsel of the wicked, nor stood in the path of the sinners, nor sat in the company of the scornful. Rather, his delight is in the Torah of the Lord, meditating on his law day and night. And he'll be like a tree planted by streams of water, that yields its fruit in due season, whose leaf will not wither, and whatever he does will prosper. Let's continue with Psalm 23. We all know. Again, I'll read in Hebrew first and then in English. Mismala David, Adonai Roy Eloy Echasar, the Nosdeshi Abit Senel Mem Lucas in Alaini, Napshi Shove, Kenacheni Bamagli, Sedifaman Shemo, Gam Kielish begets a mother's Lira Ra, Ki Atoi Modi, Shift the Commission Techa, Haley and Achmudi, Tarik Lufanashal Kanegit Sururoi, the Shant of Shem and Roshi, Koisi Raboya. Psalm of David. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not lack. He causes me to lie down in lush pastures. He leads me beside tranquil waters. He restores my soul. He guides me in righteous paths. 
for the sake of his name. And though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me, the full view of my adversaries. You've anointed my head with oil, my cup overfloweth. Surely only goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life. I will live in the house of the Lord forever. Rabbi Eli Melech of Lezhensk taught that that passage, only goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life, it means that what does it mean will follow me, will pursue me, is really the, the term that we have there. When someone, something is pursuing someone, that means that they're running away. Why would we run away from goodness and kindness? So Rabbi Elimelech says it says only goodness and kindness. Meaning if a person only has goodness and kindness, and they lack any other, anything else in their devotion to God, that goodness and kindness is going to follow them all the days of their life to the point where they're going to wind up sitting in the house of the Lord. And that's what happened to Andy. Our dear friend, Abram ben Rabbi Yosef Alevi, Andy, Andrew, he was a man who lived up to the highest ideals of all religion. He had a wonderful balance of being a normal person, living a normal life, enjoying life, and also finding time for things of the spirit. In a humble way, you would, you would hear him say things that you would only hear great mystics say. He, tells, he told the story of how he was in Florida. And he saw a vision, a mystical vision. He says maybe it was a lie to the prophet. And something there woke him up. And he said he had been 40 years in the desert. This is the way he used to talk. And then he wound up finding that goodness and kindness in his heart led him back to the house of the Lord, where he spent the rest of his life in devotion, putting on tefillin every day, praying three times a day. I remember he told me a story, and this is really exemplary of what I mean by the highest ideals of true religion, because we're not meant to be, you know, uh, hermits living out, you know, even though he lived out in the mountains, you know, but all by himself, but he wasn't a hermit. He, he was involved in the community. He's, he tells a story, it's reminiscent of one of the most famous stories from 200 years ago in Ukraine, Berdichev, one of the great heroes of that era. That's how El Luizel spoke of him, the, the rabbi of Berdichev, or Blavitsky Berdichev. The famous story goes that he saw a man who was, you know, oiling the wheels on his wagon or something, and he was wearing his prayer shawl and his phylacteries, his tefillin. And they said, any other rabbi would say, what are you doing? You're insulting these holy items by doing work while you're wearing them. And Rabbi Levi Yitzchik said, no, look how holy he is. Even when he's working, he's dominating, he's praying. And that's how, that's how Andy was. He tells a story. He tells a very interesting story, a very deep story, and a very special story. He shows who he was. He said he was at the casino. <laughs> and he saw it was almost sundown. And he realized he didn't say the afternoon prayer. He was praying three times a day. He ran out to his car, put on the yarmulke, took his sitter, and he prayed mincha, the afternoon prayer. That's a very holy thing. Because everybody prays in the synagogue, but how many people are praying? In the, in the parking lot of the casino. So he's bringing the holiness and, and, and showing how we have one God who's everywhere. Isaiah says the glory of God fills the whole world. And so Andy brought the glory of God there to the casino to show that God's there too. I remember not only, you know, we were involved in synagogue life together and he would come to my house for dinner and lunch on Shabbos and the holidays, but we, we worked together all kinds of things, you know, I remember, you know, give him a ride somewhere he needed to you know, rent a car and I happened to be going to do a wedding in Pennsylvania and that I was passing and I went with him and just it was always a, a nice time to spend with him and 
work we did together every year um, since I moved up here, except this past year, I worked with the Board of Elections on Election Day. And one, once or twice, I remember Andrew was there as well, also working at a different table. And the same thing, his simple, unassuming piety that I remember was that they were ordering a pizza and he chipped in a few dollars so he could have a slice or two. And then when he saw that the pepperoni and he knew it wasn't kosher, he didn't, he didn't eat it. And he asked me if I had some extra food and I, I had plenty of food. My wife's a, a Jewish mother. She gave me a lot of food. Uh, so I was happy to share with him. And when she heard that, she even sent even more food for him, anybody else who wanted as well. But that, that was his character was that, you know, he was, he knew who he was, and he tried his best, and that's all God wants from us, and that's what, you know, if we want to keep him alive, and whatever our traditions are, by finding that balance, some folks, they wind up getting all religious if they're too heavenly good, heavenly minded to be any earthly good, and some people are so involved in this world that they forget that there are things that our eyes don't see, but Andy managed to find that balance. And that's what we really need to do. And we can keep his memory alive and keep him alive by living like that. By being just as much, we can go to the synagogue and go to the casino and it's not a contradiction. <laughs> and I'm not saying you have to go to the casino or you have to go to the synagogue if you're not Jewish, you go to church, wherever you go. But to find that in your life, to find that balance, that's really how we can show our best memories to Andrew. And so at this point, and keep his memory alive, at this point I'd like to ask anybody who'd like to come up to say a few words. Maybe, uh, Frank, you want to come up first? Sure. Or share your memory. Good morning, and uh, thanks all for coming today. Um, he said that Andy was a special person, and that I must say myself. I have a couple of stories that I'd like to share with you with Andy, which will always be in my heart, and hopefully we'll share it along the way as we kind of get together as the years go on. Um, I've known Andy for a long time, and some of the things that he did were amazing to me, only because I couldn't do them. Um, finding out later on in life that he had been involved with Judaism and being religious and reminded me all the time that I should be like that and I took him one day to a restaurant in uh, Westchester where I took him to eat seafood at Sammy's and he was like, what are you doing eating baked clams and what are you doing eating lobster and what are you doing doing? <laughs> I, from now on, will not eat any of that stuff anymore, thanks to Andy. And from now on, I will be looking for more of a middle fish, which is what he said I should be eating as a Jew, not bottom fish. <laughs> also, would like to tell you something that impressed me very much. Andy was the kind of guy that was able to do things that most of us just aren't able to, maybe because we don't even try. Let me tell you a little bit about the casino that we kind of shared together. I know that I went to the casino looking for my brother and I had a hard time when the casinos wouldn't tell me what room he was in. Andy always found me. 15 years, 15 years he would come to my room at the casino and hang out with me. I, Andy, can I get you a bed? No, 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 I'm gonna hang out at the couch for a little while. I got gambling to do downstairs. I don't wanna be hanging out too long up here. That was his attitude. I also remember Andy saying to him, listen, me and a couple of guys are going downstairs to get couple of passes for us to go to the dinner tonight and to also go into the main event there. No, 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 I don't need it. I, I don't know. I, I don't think I'm going to go there. Surely enough, I find him in there, sitting down, talking to people. I said, Andy, how did you get in without a pass? Oh, I know people here. <laughs> I'm sitting down with Manny, and just in December, which blows my mind, I'm sitting with Manny eating at this place that we purchased these tickets from. The security guards walk away for like three, four minutes. Here comes Andy in, he takes his tray, picks up his food, sits down with us, the security guards come back to the gate, and I look at Manny and I said, could you believe this? Look at that, they walked away for five seconds, 
Andy walks in, I said, Andy, did you know that they walk away? He goes, no, there was just nobody there. I just came in. I said, okay, good. She thought he didn't joke. That was Andy. Um, I love the idea that he used to come by my house on his way home, make the excuse that he was using my, my bathroom, but really wanted to play with my dog on the way home. And uh, my dog loved him. We loved him. Andy, we're going to miss you a lot. Um, he's been a good friend, and unfortunately, it was a, what I believe happened here was a, an event that was a mistake after mistake after mistake from the woman on the car to the hospital. This was too early for Andy to go, and I will miss him very much as he was a very close friend of mine, especially in the last couple of years. And then Andy will be in peace forever. stories about Andy. It's hard to compete with what the rabbi said and some stories with uh, Frank. But I think I'll sum things up this way. Um, I loved Andy. I will always love Andy. His kindness, his heart, his balance. I respected the way he reconnected with Judaism. Frank shared the story when we went to Sammy's for his birthday. It's a very um, it's a very busy place, a lot of decorations and fish, and he was like overwhelmed by it in a good way. And when Frank started his normal order of, like Frank had mentioned with the seafood, he said, you know, Frank, it's your birthday. You'll get a pass this time, but don't eat that. And he got scolded every bite of the way. And it was funny because after that, being Irish and Italian, I'm accustomed to eating that type of fish, so going out with Frank is always a treat. Um, and I made a vow when Andy passed that, uh, you know, that that's going to be like a sacrifice on his behalf. But prior to his passing, when we would go to certain restaurants, um, because of that instance on Frank's birthday, which was back in July, um, every time like Frank would order, I'd say, you know. Maybe we should order something else. Like we, we, he put like that little guilt in us. Um, but he was very connected to uh, Judaism, which I thought was incredible. And I think, as somebody who is a strong believer in faith, that it's necessary. And um, I think the rabbi really summed it up that Andy really found the proper balance. And Andy could just conform to any environment. We all have our own personal connection with Andy. But I have to say, probably some of the few things that, that connect me to Andy in a special way is the fact that whenever we went to his house, we always had conversation. We always spoke with each other face to face about current events, um, he was a wonderful listener uh, when it, with Frank having some personal things in his life and he knew how to challenge Frank which is um, a feat in itself they really knew how to have conversation and kind of go back and forth with each other about different things with the connections in real estate and just being from Brooklyn etc but it taught me a lesson because in the day and age with our cell phones and you know I got so glued to just you know looking at my phone 24 7 but when I went to White Lake to visit Andy with Frank we looked in each other's eyes and we had conversation you know there was always like a nice station in the background of music but we just connected as human beings without all the added features of the modern technology today and it was really refreshing because for most of us who have been by Andy's home and know where he lives and just in general, I mean, he would give you a tour and he would know this plot of land and, you know, the Fat Lady Cafe, the Dancing Cat, you know, of course, Bethel Woods. And in his own personal neighborhood, when you walk down the road, there's the most beautiful lake. And it just gave you an opportunity to really connect with nature and just being with another human being without 
added distraction. <coughs> you know, it was almost refreshing when the internet didn't connect to the phone because, like I said, you know, you would have to, it was just a pleasure to speak to him. And, and he always had great conversations about a lot of different things. He was a lover of animals with his cat, Chachi. And as silly as this may sound, when Frank and I got um, our dog, Lola, you know, we're so attached to her that we like to take her anywhere and everywhere we can. And Andy was very welcoming because he knew we were, you know, it's quite a distance away. And he would always say, you know, bring Lola with you. Come on up. It's okay. And I took advantage of that. And he was just very <coughs> kind. And it may sound silly, but, you know, not many people are going to open up their homes to your pet and let them stay and hang out or whatever. But it was just, you know, Andy is just... The Andy I know is just a loving, kind, giving human being. Um, like I said, he would always be a, a good listener. And he was just very special to be around. I remember when the Jewish holidays came around, he would often uh, talk about Rabbi Joseph. Oh, you and Frank could come up. You could join us. I said, you know, Andy, I said, I'm not sure about that. I said, it's not that I wouldn't feel welcome per se. I said, but that sounds like something you really enjoy. Oh, don't worry. They're... A wonderful family they welcome you with open arms and I said well you know you enjoy that and I remember I, I bring up Thanksgiving because it was October the first week in October and I usually go to my sister's it's like a given rule and this year I thought we would host it at my house and I said to Frank I said what do you think about having Thanksgiving at the house this year he goes you know what do you think about it? the holidays and this and that I said well you know what he goes, why are you even bringing this up now? I said, because I want to ask Andy if he would join us for Thanksgiving this year. And he says, you know what, why not? So I called him up and I said, Andy, I want to be your first invitation for Thanksgiving. And he said, I will come. <laughs> so I was so thrilled about that. And as it turns out, um, we ended up having it at my sister's house for other reasons, but he joined us. And just to share a little bit about that, it was a very... You know, it's just my immediate family, my sister and her three kids, my parents, Frank and I, and I just remember sharing a really good meal. And if you're familiar with like the, the TV schedule, she has three little kids, so the TV's always on. They had um, Home Alone, and I never watched that movie in its entirety. And um, we sat on the couch together, and we were watching the movie, and there are just certain parts of the movie, if you're familiar with it, that are hysterical. And just to laugh, like that genuine belly laugh, and just crack up over the silly scenes that were in the movie, and just relax together and, and, and be together, was probably a Thanksgiving I'll never forget. And then, of course, he had to leave because he was on his way to the spa in New Jersey, meeting uh, some friends that he uh, enjoyed doing. And uh, Frank and I finally had an opportunity to share that experience with him uh, December 16th, it was a Sunday night. And he's always like, oh, you have to come to the spa, the spa, the spa. I said, all right, we'll finally go to this famous spa. And we did, and it was a nice time. Um, but the funny thing about it was we ended up getting out of there late, and he was, he was planning on staying over, but then he said, no, I can't stay over, I have to get my cat. So he always had his own little list of priorities of, of what was important to him. And I, I have a thousand different memories and stories running through my head, but I enjoyed Andy's company and the art of having an actual conversation with somebody without any distraction. And I hope we could all find peace with that uh, amongst ourselves and not be so distracted with the modern uh, conveniences. And seeing the hospital, how many people came on his behalf you know, night and day, uh, just from all different areas, finally matching the faces with the names and the people and the places. It was really um, an eye-opener, and we should all be that lucky in our time of need to be surrounded by friends and loved ones who genuinely care about us, because for all of us, and most of you in the room, were there visiting him. Um, you know, that was not an easy thing to see our friend in that condition. It just wasn't. Um, it was horrifying, actually. And to get through it with the love and support of the people that meant so much to him um, was really like, wow, we should, we should all be that lucky. And uh, to Sean, 
his daughter, how much he loves her and his children. And he's convinced that her son looks exactly like him. And he has so many wonderful memories, you know, to be um, a son, a husband, a father, and a grandfather. You know, those are things you can never buy in any store. And the company of good friends and family that love you can't be bought anywhere. So I'll always miss Andy. I'll never put him in the past. He will always be with us. This is just a transitional part. And at the risk of sounding a little selfish, when the time comes for myself, I will be comforted in knowing that Andy will be at the gates waiting to greet me and to give me the tour. And it will make uh, that part of life a little bit easier to deal with. So thank you. very fortunate to marry the wonderful woman that Andy had something to do with and had the pleasure of meeting Andy and every day was a venture every day with him we've been from Florida to New York to Baltimore with Andy and every it was always an experience we we came up to his house in White Lake and Sean's getting ready. We're gonna we're gonna go and see uh, you know all White Lake. Well, he's like, Mark, let's go to Walmart. Well, next thing I know, we're at the casino betting on horses. <laughs> <laughs> you know, just, there, there's so many memories of him, and I'm just glad I got to know a great man. And I always remember him, and he and I'm gonna pass my memories on to his grandkids. He's if. if if our son, Sean and I's son was here, and he, he'd probably be standing on the casket right now, opening his eyes, saying, wake up, Grandpa, because he's, he's done that to him. He, he got tortured every time he came to North Carolina. <laughs> he, the kids were just relentless, just, and he took it. I mean, and he, he's just a great guy, and I, I'm glad I had the privilege to know him. According to our traditions, we have opportunity, because we're gathered here as a community, to ask forgiveness from Andrew for anything that we might have done, and that it's traditional to do so because all the time in life, you know, we any relationships that human beings have as part of being a human being is that things don't always go the right way. And so on behalf of everyone here, we want to ask our forgiveness for anything that we've done, whether, you know, whether you were here with us in this world and now that you're no longer here with us in this world, looking down from us below. And on behalf of everyone here, we ask your forgiveness. And we look forward to the day that our Jewish tradition teaches, that the Bible says in Isaiah and in Daniel and other places, the resurrection of the dead, and the time when all tears will be wiped away from all eyes. And so we ask, please rise for the memorial prayer. El <laughs> Shalom, 
Friends are going to follow out behind the casket. Someone else is going to address the work if you go into the cemetery. 